Hello everyone, I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Before we begin, I must give credit and thanks to a special friend who gave me the idea to do this story. Thank you girl. But today we're going to chat about the unfortunate events that took place in May of 1803 at Dunbar Creek on St. Simons Island in Glen County, Georgia. On this day, 75 Igbo slaves were bound together by shackles and chains, and they walked into the murky waters of Dunbar Creek while singing and committing suicide, according to reports. So, with that being said, let's chat. In May of 1803, the Igbo Africans along with other West African captives, arrived in Savannah, Georgia, by way of the slave ship named the Wanderer. Now, to give you all a little backstory, the slaves' voyage across the Atlantic Ocean from West Africa to Savannah took anywhere from four to six months. And during this time, the slaves, they were pretty much stacked together on top of each other, I mean, there were horrible conditions, and they pretty much lied in each other's urine, feces, and other bodily fluids during this long voyage. And, of course, you know, those were the typical conditions for the slaves during what we know as the Middle Passage. Now, these conditions, coupled with the length of the voyage, led to many infectious diseases. And to prevent the spread of these diseases in Savannah and their neighboring areas before the slaves entered through the Savannah port, they were quarantined at Lazaretto, or Lazaretto, however you want to pronounce it. And that was on the west end of Tybee Island. Now, Lazaretto, which is Italian for pet house, was a nine-story quarantine facility where slaves remained while being examined and inspected by a physician to determine if they harbored any type of infectious diseases. Now, the diseased individuals, they remained at the facility, and those who died from the diseases were buried on the west end of Tybee Island. But back to the story. The slaves aboard the Wanderer were purchased for around $100 each by slave merchants Thomas Spaulding and John Cooper. They were purchased to be resold to plantations on nearby St. Simon's Island. Now, after the slaves were medically cleared to be transported to St. Simon's Island, the slaves were packed under the deck of a coastal vessel. Now, some reports say the vessel they traveled on was called the Schooner York, and others say it was called the Monrovia. Now, whatever the name was, um, the slaves, they were stacked and chained. They were, I'm sorry, they were shackled and chained together under the deck of the vessel. And what happened next still remains somewhat a mystery. According to reports, while the slaves were being taken to St. Simon's during this voyage, they rebelled against their captors and took control of the ship. Now, some say they killed their captors by drowning them aboard the ship, while others say the captors were so afraid when the slaves rebelled, they jumped off the ship into the water, sealing their own fate. Now, it is said that after the slaves took control of the ship, it crashed into Dunbar Creek, and according to an alleged eyewitness to the event, once the ship had crashed into Dunbar Creek, the slaves exited the ship, still wearing their shackles and chains. Then the slaves, they marched along the shore, singing, and under, the high, under their high chief's direction, they walked into the marshy waters of Dunbar Creek. They were still bound together by the heavy shackles and chains as they walked into the water. Now, it is said that Roswell King, one of the white overseers on the nearby Pierce Butler Plantation, it said that he wrote the first accounts of the incident. Now, it said that King stated that as soon as the Igbo landed on St. Simon's Island, they took to the swamp, committing suicide by walking into Dunbar Creek. Now, he went even further to say the most important part of the story 
was the loss of a substantial financial investment for Cooper and Spalding. Wow. Just wow. According to reports, 13 of the slaves' bodies were recovered from the water. And the rest are believed to have survived the escape. Well, have survived and escaped. I'm sorry. And according to a letter describing the Dunbar Creek's events, the Savannah slave dealer, William Mean, noted that some of the slaves were salvaged by bounty hunters who claimed $10 per head from their owners, Spalding and Cooper. Now, other sources stated that the survivors were taken to Cannons Point on St. Simon's Island. But the most significant historical tale of what happened to the Igbo people is the tale of the flying Africans. Now, in African folklore, it is believed that the Igbo people did not drown, nor were they captured by bounty hunters. Many Africans believe that the Igbo people rose to the sky and flew back home. One tale even describe it as they turned into buzzards and flew back home to Africa. But either way, the story goes, they flew back to Africa in the tale, hence the name The Flying Africans. Now, of course, we probably would never know what actually happened at Dunbar Creek, but Tell me what you all think, you know, in the comments below. Do you all believe the Igbo people drowned? Do you believe they were captured by the bounty hunters or, you know, captured and taken to Cannon's Point? Or do you believe in the tale of the flying Africans? Well, that's the end of today's chat. Please like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. You know, we're trying to get to our thousand subscribers. Support if you would like to. No pressure. The information to support will be in the description box below or the description of the video below, rather. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.